perfect. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Good, because I can't see anything. I'll myself in just a second, too. Okay, no, that's perfect. Um, if we can, oh, I do see it is recorded. Perfect. There we, there we go. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. This has been like a, a little bit of a whirlwind, right? I mean, we are jumping from one session to the next. Um, I am excited about this one. I could talk about email marketing. You've probably heard me talk about email marketing uh, numerous times, but um, you know, let me just say, I love this image because you know, when you really nail something, you get it right. And we can all think about those times, right? It could be personally, professionally, it could be watching someone you've coached. This is what it looks like, that pure joy feeling of joy. For me, it can be something super nerdy, uh, like watching the open rate and the click through rate of an email um, climb beyond previous emails. So I think I've clearly been inside far too much these days. <laughs> so I can't write your copy. Uh, and I can't tell you word for word what to say. But what I can do is provide you with some foundations for success. Um, to really set you on the path to you know, getting that look, right? That nailing your email marketing. I said this at last year's conference for those of you that were in Nashville, the average open rate for mass mail is 20% for home builders. And it stayed the same for several years. So let's not be satisfied with that. I challenged everyone last year and I'm gonna challenge you again. Let's focus on achieving more. And you know, let's also kind of start to switch our thinking a little bit too and focus on email clicks, that call to action within an email. Um, my name is Angela McKay and I'm, I'm the VP of client, um, client success at ECI. I've got a, a significant email marketing background. I've been with Lasso for about 12 years and I think I've worked with many of you and I hope to, you know, I hope to work with more of you. Um, my goal is for you to walk away with a few nuggets of information and just some ideas to, to share. Um, I'm pretty passionate about it. I hope you guys can probably tell. Um, I've made mistakes and, and I, you know, you have to adapt to changes. Um, but at the core, email marketing remains the same and providing us with an opportunity to provide our followers with stories and visuals to engage them, pique their interest and build loyalty and trust. That's what it's all about, right? Easy. So, you know, this has been a bit of a doozy of a year and it's not quite over, quite half over yet. It's in some respects, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, it's um, how did we get to the end of June? And then in other ways, I'm going home, oh holy smokes, it's only June. <laughs> I think we're ready for the next year, the next half of the year. So we're going to talk about what the landscape is today, your strategy at different stages and develop developing playbooks and workflows based on based on engagement. There's a lot of email out there. And you know, Basam was talking about the importance of text and absolutely the importance of all different types of communication. There's no question though, email is growing. Um, it is, uh, on average, people have about two email accounts, personal email accounts themselves. I've got a few more than that. Um, email churn, so the turnover of email, um, uh, email addresses is about 30% per year. So, you know, the list you had five years ago may not be, uh, may not be valid today. Email addresses are free and disposable. But email marketing is one of the easiest channels to measure. So you can measure overall campaign performance, opens, clicks, and conversion rates. Um, and an email address is a unique identifier. So it gives you that glimpse um, into a subscriber's behavior and preferences. And for each subscriber who interacts with your messages, you can learn uh, what content resonates with the, uh, resonates the most or how long they engage with your email. Good email marketers understand the email channel, um, but really great email marketers, and I want you to all think about this, understand that email is one part of the entire marketing mix and, and it needs to be integrated with other marketing. So you heard Matt and Molly talk earlier today, just the importance of visuals and it's, you know, you have to think about who you are as an organization and the web, how important the website is and integrating all of that communication so there's some consistency. You're building brand, you're building a personality. So cross-channel campaigns, that's what will help success moving forward. So on average, we receive 121 emails a day. So I don't know who came up with that, but you know what? That's probably about right. 
<laughs> there is competition in the inbox and we know that. But we also know that the average person checks their email 15 times a day and I'm not talking work emails. So it is, uh, it's a real thing. People are engaged and they, and including millennials, ask them. They are, they are subscribing to the brands they love and they are reading their email. You need to stand out, right? You've got to compete. You're competing with a cluttered inbox. You need to stand out. So email is still very much a viable form of communication, but communication needs to be consistent with the brand and being human and relatable is key. So companies that put the customer at the center, you know, Molly had a heart in her presentation too. You know what? There's something about that, right? You know, companies that put that customer at the center have greater revenue, more satisfied employees, and happier clients. Because happy employees make happy clients. So a customer-centric company is in tune with what motivates your buyers, and you need to be fast, not perfect, which is why email fits nicely. So I am going to be known as the person who shows the same slide at all our presentations. If there is nothing else that you take away from this, or if you want a checklist of what you should include in your email, use this. This is a study that comes from the National Association of Realtors and the, what buyers are looking for, what they crave. Knowledge, trust, service, easy, being easy to work with, reliable. You, you deliver when you, when, you, when you say you're going to. Honesty and value. That's what your customers are looking to you to provide. So individually, as well as a company. So whether it's a marketing email or a personal email, check those boxes. When COVID hit, many people asked, what do we do? <laughs> the first thing you always need to do is put yourself in your buyer's shoes. You've got to, and we, I think we have said, we've heard this, or the sessions that I've, I've been through, we've heard this in every single session. You need to put yourself in the buyer's, look at, look at it through the buyer's lens. But you need to always be doing that. COVID just kind of forced us to do that. <laughs> uh, what do they want to hear and what do they need to hear? What is most important to them? and be real. So we're all solving problems. People want to move out of the city. They have a growing family. They need more space. They want outdoor living. Uh, they need office space. They've got aging parents. They've changed jobs. They're retiring, whatever it is. We need to understand it and relate to them in our communication. So I seem to always go back to Simon Sinek's um, book, Start With Why. It seems to apply with everything. So always answer that are we, uh, why, why do they need us? So it means that you need to define your audience and start to segment. Um, you know, most of this information is pretty easy to, uh, to figure out. And, you know, not all prospects are created equal. And Dave said this uh, in, the last, in the last session, your sales process or work workflow um, can be targeted to each segment. So depending on the sources will determine how much they know about your company. So, you know, I think Dave, Dave mentioned this, you know, pure digital marketing leads some from Facebook or from some directories may not know very much about you. So these are, as Dave said, the marketing qualified leads as opposed to sales qualified. So marketing qualified leads may, may sit in your marketing database for some time before they're interested. Whereas a sales qualified lead from your website or chat may move along at a much faster rate. So they're likely, you know, more researched, they're more definitive in what they want. And what you say to each of those segments is quite different. And this is where a one size fit all campaign uh, just doesn't work. And in fact, it can turn people away because you're losing engagement. If you're not speaking their language, if you're not speaking to them, you're going to turn them, turn them away. So let's define your audience and your goals for each segment. So most of you likely have created personas for your community. So who are your targeted buyers um, and where do your leads fit in? And when you segment your leads, you start to you know, better understand the buyer journey um, and you can craft messages to fit that segment. 
you know, so those who are, say, you know, six months or more out, maybe earlier on in their search and more interested in understanding the build process or the advantages of new versus old design inspiration, things they should consider in the process. Those who are closer to buying or looking at availability, lot information, making design choices, uh, you know, homes that are a match. The point is their needs are different and the messages should be also. You know, one thing we found during COVID, and, and I'd love to hear, I can't see chat right now, but I'd love to hear, <laughs> I'd love to hear, you know, we've seen that realtor sales, outside realtor sales um, have increased for some builders and realtors have taken a bigger interest, right, in new homes. It was their only opportunity to sell. So the one thing I'll ask you to think about, um, because we're, we're kind of notorious for, you know, building that realtor list of, you know, hundreds or thousands of names and just, you know, sending out blasting emails to them. Remember that number of 120 emails a day. I'm going to go out on a limb and say for realtors, that number is probably double. <laughs> so, you know, being really mindful of this and providing that information in, a, you know, a visually appealing way, in an easy to digest way. So you stand out, you know, I even suggest asking them, ask them what they, how they would like to digest the information, receive the information. So what do you say? Be human. So creating a personality with your brand, and Molly and Matt talked about this earlier, and this needs to resonate. This needs to flow into your email marketing. You know, I have to admit, I'm a, I'm a heartstrings kind of person. I love the family, the baby, dog pictures, um, show and tell your buyers what it's like to be living in one of your homes. Avoid sales jargon. So really watch this in your subject lines, pricing, deals, discount, dollar signs, etc. Not only does it turn people off, um, but it, al it also on a totally, from a deliverability of email perspective, it can trigger spam filters. So it's, it's just not, simply not a good practice. Uh, your recipients don't want to see it, nor do, uh, nor do the, the email service providers. You know, ask questions in your email. They can, they can be lifestyle questions, but they can also be, they can be useful. We had a client here in Canada um, that would use surveys for progressive profiling. So just, you know, adding bits of information to the profile in their, in their, their CRM. The project was a condo development um, that hadn't started construction. So they were able to ask questions to determine the interest in number of bedrooms and some design preference so that they were able to, in the whole pre-sale uh, part of the sales process, they were able to gather more information about what buyers actually wanted. People love to participate and be part of something and publish the results. They want to see them. So, you know, we talk about being visual and I, I have to say, as I said, I'm a heart, a heartstrings kind of person and I love this image. This kind of says it all. And in fact, I think it could be used for home building. It could be a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> it could be someone sharing their, you know, this is where they're going to live. Storytelling takes skill and artfulness to truly connect um, with, uh, with readers, but it doesn't need to be complex. You can, you can uh, find, find the right visuals. Your content can be repurposed. And so when I talk about uh, email marketing, your content, this is content that's on your website, on your blogs, on your, you're sharing it in social media as well. It's another communication vehicle. So as far as what kind of stories you've got, happy home buyers, inspiring company milestones, a sincere message from your owner or president. I, you know, I, I wouldn't overuse that, but those kinds of emails often have the highest open rate because they're different. Um, the story behind your community, the, the um, community relations, neighborhood tales, um, seasonal stories uh, about the, you know, what, what time of year it is, holidays, um, and design inspiration. So you can also, you know, tell your vision or dream that will bring a change to the community. Your version may not, you know, may not change the world or, but it can bring a change in the lives of your customers and your story will sell that, will sell. Uh, if you follow, there's a few builders that I, that I, I, I love and there's many, many more, um, but three that I, I, I think do a great job of storytelling uh, is Garmin Homes. Um, CBH Homes and the New Home Company. 
um, they do a great job and both visually and in writing. So if you subscribe to their emails, they're very much, they relate to their website. There's, there's, there's a link back. Um, they're personable and approachable. Um, you can also um, use rapport building as um, stories. So this is where you don't exactly sell, but you're in you're investing in in that long term relationship with your um, with your um, recipients by sharing experiences. So these stories reflect the experiences that you might have had, um, and it might be the story of you know joy of the feeling of safety health in the quality of your homes and the type of materials you use you use um, it should connect at an emotional level uh, with your readers and you know car companies are pretty good at that um, talk with your salespeople; they are masters at telling these types of stories and they may not even know it uh, you know sit down with them and and learn what what they're sharing with their prospects um, who are uh, who are touring the their model homes? So stories are easy to find in everyday life, and they hit people's emotions. But be sincere and genuine in your in your storytelling, and remember um, that you're not hard selling, but building that long lasting relationship. So, but you know, less is more, and the average amount of time that someone spends on an email. 15 seconds. <laughs> they scan and read about 50 words. So that based on you know what what Molly said more than 90% of consumers prefer imagery in uh, and, and they prefer imagery in email. So visuals are important. GIFs or GIFs, however way you want to say it, I call it a GIF, but um, are hugely popular and effective in garnering attention. And a picture says a thousand words has never been a more true statement. I think Anthony said that earlier. Um, I love this image, you know, that saying, uh, you know, putting lipstick on a pig, there's still a pig. It's a cute one though. Um, <laughs> you, you need, you do need to put content, uh, content always trumps design. And um, your, your goal is you do what's best for the reader and be expected. So content is always going to trump everything. And, I don't know if you can hear the airplane flying above me, but you know, everything was quiet up until now. <laughs> um, there are four simple ingredients to an email, um, a headline, an image, you know, some sort of little teaser and a button. It's all you have to do. The absence of friction, there's nothing else, draws your eye to the call to action, making the click more likely. So think about that. Think about how your emails look today because the real purpose, I will go back to, you want them to open the email, you want them to click, you want them to go to your website, you want them to look for more information. You want to be able to track that, see what they're interested in. So keep it simple. A headline, an image, some little teaser about what they're clicking on, and that button. So there's a common concept around email that people look at the sender as to whether or not they'll keep or delete an email. And then they'll look at the subject line as to whether they will open an email. So one can argue that the subject line is the gateway to a successful campaign. <laughs> and there's been lots and lots of studies uh, about what, uh, what works and what doesn't. Uh, we have seen, uh, and there is, Putting, uh, putting your recipient's name in the subject line has a huge benefit. Uh, it's personalized, uh, they see their name. Uh, one word of caution, you wanna make sure you have their name in, the, uh, in that first name when they're on your, in your CRM. Uh, but looking at different types of subject lines that are welcoming, um, you use the word, a person, use you. Welcome home, Angela. You're invited, Angela. Shift from in-person to a virtual event. So we did this, that, or virtual appointment. Making sure you saw this, Angela. Your new home awaits. Angela, we have a special offer for you. So think about the subject line and think about what you can do to just make that 
experience a little bit, so, you know, a little more likely to click on open. Um, I've got four companies listed here. These are four of my favorites as far as uh, different emails. I, I have said this over and over again, subscribe to retailers, subscribe and see what they are doing. See the approach that they take. I'll show you some emails um, towards the end of the presentation. So you very rarely want to be creating an email from scratch. Um, instead, utilize, utilizing a library of custom templates that are branded for your company. Have your marketing agency, I know um, Group 2, Builder Designs, they all cr will create templates for you. Um, have content blocks that salespeople can pick and choose what they want. Allows, just allows you to maintain your brand and provides the flexibility for your sales team. There's lots of um, discussion about whether or not salespeople, could sh sales, salespeople should create um, and, and send out mass email. I'm kind of in the marketing, marketing camp. I, there's, uh, I'd love to hear your, your perspective. If you do have your sales team sending out email, please, please, please provide them with the templates. Make it easy for them to ensure that the brand, the messaging is, uh, uh, resonates uh, and is, is, is consistent with your look. Uh, one of the frustrations that we hear from salespeople is often the language used for email templates. So for sales process templates and workflows, involve the salespeople so that they can have input into the tone and personality of the email. Because what happens when they don't? They don't complete their activities. They don't use them and it messes up your data. And we know that data, we know all of that, you wanna make sure that um, you wanna see the activity of your, of your recipients and see that progression. So keep templates simple. Um, remember those four ingredients, the header, the image, the teaser, and the button. <laughs> So we know there's general types of emails and these are just examples. So you've got a new community coming, community update, virtual tours, visualization, a newsletter, uh, events, uh, invite, a welcome email. And I'm gonna talk about a couple of, uh, a couple of these specifically. Uh, the welcome campaign. I cannot stress more uh, the huge opportunity to capture interest and in really nailing this email. This is the most opened email and you have a captive audience. They have just signed up. They will look for the email and they will read it. So customize to the source, meaning Dave talked about this, the marketing qualified versus sales qualified, where the, where, whether it came from Facebook or digital marketing lead or directory, customize it so that there's some relevancy. They can relate to what they have just seen. In some cases, they haven't been to your website. So make sure that you're starting to build that brand. It's not always limited to one email. So, you know, we kind of think of the welcome, uh, that, you know, the auto reply email, but think about it as what are some of those next steps that you want them? You may want to introduce them further to your company. You may want to send them a sample newsletter right out of the gate. You might want to do a few different stages, keep it simple, but you might want to do something within the first, uh, within the first week or so. Set expectations. So don't inundate them. If you're going to send an email, you know, if you're going to tell them that you're, they'll expect an email once a month, don't send them an email, you know, uh, every day for the first seven days. Explain who you are and why it matters and always, always, always have a next step so that they know what to expect and there's a, there's a call to action. So the next one is the re-engage. We've all, um, winning them back. We all have that database of, of some leads that, you know, we just haven't heard from them. And I, I'm not a proponent of deleting them. I'm not a proponent because you want to, you, you want to keep them in, but you know what? You can't keep emailing them. Uh, we're not talking about deliverability today, but emailing to non-engaged recipients has an impact on your deliverability. It, it, prevents your email that you really want to get to the to to your engaged uh, recipients it may not get to them so what we've uh, what we've helped some of our clients with is a re-engagement um, and you know again i'm a heartstrings kind of person i love the dog pictures and i think i don't know if anyone could say that they don't like that picture 
<laughs> I think that's Dave's dog, actually. <laughs> uh, but this particular campaign, um, so this was to uh, about a thousand, a thousand people in a client's database that they had collected uh, over a year ago. And we did, we sent it out and then we forwarded it on and we, uh, we had about a 50% open rate. And of that, about 25% clicked. And these were stale leads. So these were people that said, yeah, I want to, I, you know what, I do want to stay on your list and I am interested. And it then gave the sales team a fresh list of leads to follow up with. Not to necessarily, you know, we want to continue to email them, but to take the next step and phone them as well. So workflows and playbooks, um, you know, always, always, what is your outcome? What do you want to achieve? I think sometimes we tend to kind of look at one step at a time <laughs> and not necessarily the whole picture. And we want to, you want to build simple workflows because more complexity will cause more errors um, and provide that content library, like I said to your sales team. Um, Give them some templates to use and modify, um, swap in different pieces of content, train your team to really use your CRM, help them understand the value. You'll be getting them, you'll be getting them better leads when they do that. Um, your playbooks, you know, anywhere, I, I, I'm a real proponent of, of um, probably five to seven activities um, in, in each workflow um, and do an audit every six months. That was one thing that was our first advice to all of our clients uh, when, uh, when COVID hit is have a look at your auto reply email, have a look at your workflows and your sales processes, make sure they're still relevant. Um, and there, you need to freshen them up. Things change with email. Your logo might change slightly. People change. Uh, your, your offers may change. So do an audit every, uh, uh, every couple of, uh, I would say every six months. And build in some automation. You know, there's um, you know, those types of emails that really don't need a sales rep's intervention. Automate them. Allow them to go out um, automatically. It just makes everything, uh, everything a little simpler, including for you and for the sales team. So some of those triggers uh, are website registration, uh, Facebook, uh, website visits, a survey that someone might, um, uh, might fill out, an appointment, uh, model visit, rating change, inactivity. Those are all triggers that you can have a follow-up process or a workflow um, and have that create that for your sales team ahead of time so that um, they've got some predictable, you've got a systematic approach to, uh, to sales. It's a team effort. Um, and marketing should complement what sales is doing. Sales should complement what market, marketing is doing. There is no silver bullet uh, and no magic formula, uh, but there is a far greater chance of success when there's some planning. And, you know, I recognize that when COVID hit, um, this, this is a pretty good example of, of um, you know, of what happened when COVID hit the scrap. You know, the, the interesting thing is that those who had a system in place, and, and Matt talked to this, um, those who have taken a systematic approach were able to pivot and far more easily. They were a little more nimble, right? They could make those changes because they had a system in place, because they could see their data, they could see what was happening. A communication strategy is a bit like a fitness or nutrition program. Um, you need to create one first and then you need to follow it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you also need to create realistic goals, right? So if you know what, you say you want to lose 20 pounds and, you know, in, in 20 days or 30 days, that's not realistic. So you've got to be realistic. Otherwise you give up and you abandon it and you're back to sending everything to everyone again. So think of the, you know, it's, uh, there, there's no easy strategy necessarily, or there's no easy button, I should say. Um, but it does take, it does take work and it is easier in the long run. It's a little painful at first, uh, but very quickly becomes, uh, becomes routine. So you want to make sure that you've got a content calendar and have a plan. It saves you time. It then provides you with the opportunities to experiment and test and do something a little different. Take a segment of your audience and try something. Do it. It's, it's good to try and it's good to, to test. So 
there's here's a couple of um, I used uh, uh, BarkBox and Asana and Peloton. I don't think I've got an example for Starbucks, but um, I'm a big fan of Starbucks uh, email. They, you know, for a four dollar cup of coffee, they spend a lot of money on email. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, I think I stole Dave's line. Dave uses that quite a bit. Uh, but uh, a couple of emails that I have, uh, and, and why these work, um, Canva is a great tool, by the way, if you don't know Canva, it is a, um, uh, an image tool that allows you to create some really e easy social media images. And um, if you don't know Photoshop, it's a great replacement. So one of the reasons why I love this email is, first of all, Discover Canada's top video templates. That draws my attention to it right away, right? It's, uh, I'm curious. People are curious. So what are those? Um, this is super simple, uh, super easy. It's a clean design. I can play it. And I think you'll, uh, there we go. Um, one comment I would have is it's long. And it, it actually has all 10 the top videos in this email. I think they probably could have shortened it. They probably could have uh, cut it down and had you click to it. You can view all templates, uh, but it's, uh, it's an easy, easy template to, to see and read. It's clean. Asana is a productivity tool and um, they keep things exceptionally clean. Um, again, going back to that premise of a header, an image, a teaser and a button. <laughs> this is, and you know, in, in all of these cases, I love the wording they choose to. And this is what you'll learn from retailers as well, is they, they, the, a better way to work awaits. You know, you could translate that into home building quite easily. Um, and this was their, uh, I have to shift here because I can't see where my um, play button is. There we go. Uh, And no, I've taken screen captures on my phone. Um, the majority of people are reading their emails on the phone, so you want to make sure that it's mobile friendly. I think that goes without saying these days, but it's something to really, uh, to always consider. Um, and the next one, whoop, let's just, there we go. Okay, um, the next one is BarkBox. I don't know if you're familiar with BarkBox. I am, um, I think I love my BarkBox more than my dog does. Um, but this one is a, this one is, uh, they've had a hard time shipping to Canada and um, they, they sent, you could argue um, this is a little bit long, um, but look, they've, they, they've called out my dog's name in this email. So they've, uh, they've nailed it in my, uh, in my opinion. It's an update about my order. So it's, uh, it's tweaked my interest and it's heavy on the text. But in this case, it works. It works, and they've got a picture at the bottom. I, you know, they've got, uh, they've. Uh, I love how they, they the personality that they have created. Kind whoops and belly scratches from Lucy and Fitz. Uh, so it's a fun one. I would, uh, I would highly recommend uh, subscribing to something like this. Um, it's, uh, it's a good one. Um, and Peloton. I'm, uh, I'm a Pel no mistake. I am a Peloton uh, junkie. Uh, but this one um, here, I have to admit the subject line is long. Um, I would not choose that. But look at the design. It's simple. It is an image, a header, and then a little teaser with a click. They've got, uh, it's, it's more of a newsletter. Uh, so they've got multiple, multiple items, um, but super simple. It looks beautiful. It's clean and it's got interesting content. There we go. So keep it real. Um, know your buyer, listen to them and connect with them. It's pretty simple. So on that note, I am going to stop sharing the video. Let's just stop share. There we go. There we go. Dave, you are here. Let me unmute. There we go. So if there are any questions, how are we doing for time? I think I've got a few minutes. There we go. 
Oh, I can't. I, you know what? I've reached that point where I asked to start video. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there so were a couple of questions. Yeah. And um, just to kind of key in on a couple of these, we get lots, lots of questions about subject lines, right? And you had some really great points in there. And one of the questions that we get, well, can we format the subject line? Can I, can I make it bold? Can I change the colors? And the unfortunate answer is no, you can't. Um, usually when an email arrives in your inbox, it will remain bold until it's read. So we don't have the ability to, um, to format the subject line. One of the things that you can do is you can put emojis into a subject line now. Um, I, I would be cautious about it and I would just make yeah. sure that the emoji is in the right format. It has to be an HTML emoji. So you can't just copy an image and put it into a subject line. It just, it, it, it doesn't work. It will actually break yeah. the subject line. So it has to be an HTML. Um, there's lots of information about that online on how to, you know, what types of emojis fit in, but you cannot format a, uh, um, a subject line. And you had some great points also about question marks and and those real key selling propositions so you know one of the things that I always recommend is that you know the the other main component of that email is that pre-header right and that's that second opportunity to get our message into the inbox without having to have somebody read the actual email it's kind of that tertiary subject line and we can you know format the heck out of that we can put in 10 exclamation points if we want that we would never <laughs> have the opportunity to do within the uh, uh within the subject so those are just a couple of real real kind of kind of key things to, to think about yeah and you know what i don't think there's any email provider that allows bolding in a in a subject line so it's not it's just i, I and you know what i may have caused some confusion i bolded it just to highlight my name and the 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 personalization to it um because it is really it is when you see your name in a subject line it uh, it certainly draws draws attention one thing i didn't talk about is the is the forward email or you know it the ability when you have a really important email that you've got an event happening and you send out an email on on Monday inviting people to the event this weekend what you can also do you know three days later or maybe on the Thursday a couple of days before the event is you can create a forward um, create another template and create a forward and in fact I did that yet last night to some of you who may be on the, uh, the who, who may be on this um, I did a forward to all of our register or all, everyone who had registered for the event and said hey um, to, to all the people who hadn't opened one particular email I said hey you know I just wanted to make sure that you had received uh, received the registration link and so but you know what you don't I got so many responses back because it looked personal right it was uh, it was a personal approach, and but it was a mass mail, and it allowed it allowed me to reach out personally and uh, but on mass, and uh, and gave that approach. I wouldn't use it all the time. It's kind of one of those things that's sort of special, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, and and it and it gives that individuality within the body of the email yeah. to make it seem like you have personally forwarded this. So all you're really doing is just adding that, you know, that FWD into the subject line of the email. So it's just another mass email, but it has a differentiation and arrives differently inside of somebody's inbox. Now the FWD is one thing, the re is another, right? So two different things you might think, well, if FW works, then re must work as well. It, it, it doesn't. In fact, if, if you put re into the subject line, it has a different connotation. Actually, you'll get a negative open rate compared if, if you put a uh, compared to uh, if you put a forward in into the subject line. So just some little things to, to, to think about. But that's always a little trick to get people, especially the second time you send an email out to your unread. So you send one email out, wait a couple of days, send another, send that same email out to just the people that didn't read it the first time. Um, put an FW in, into the subject line. I think you'll be surprised. No, absolutely. And you know, we can, things change as well. And I, I'm the first one to admit, I think, you know, we've gone kind of full circle with different types of emails. And in some cases, um, there's, there's a time and place for text based um, with, with low images, with fewer images or no images. Um, and then there's a, there's a time and place for multiple, uh, more templated email as well. And I, you know, I think we're, we're headed back into the little more images now than we are uh, just, just text-based because people really, they need that separation of text and they need to, to, to see things. They're, they're scanning. There we go. Now, have we answered? I need my glasses. Oh, gosh, I hate that. <laughs> I 
think we answered everything. There we go. Hey. Hey. Thought I'd pop in and just say, if anybody wants to have some fun on our break. Yeah. To jump okay. in, I just dropped the link in the chat. So we have a, we have a break for the next 45 minutes, but we're gonna have a 20 minute little trivia session in Kahoot uh, just to have some fun. So if you guys wanna sit back and have some water or an adult beverage, uh, nobody's looking and, uh, uh, and, and have some fun trivia, then jump into that meeting session that I just put in there. It's also on the conference agenda. Um, so, you know, you can access it that way. And then at uh, 345, we are having our marketing panel. So with, we'll, we have uh, Holly Hayner from CBH Homes, Steve Shoemaker from Ideal Homes. We have, uh, I'm going down the list, Angela Showing from History Maker Homes. We have Brooke Carroll from Homes by Dickerson and Laura Hansen from New Tradition Homes. So 345 and then, but our break in Kahoot Trivia Grab a beer, grab some water, grab a cocktail, have some fun. I think it might be the same link, Matt. Is it? No, I, think I so. Is it? Are we in the same session? I think so. All right. Well, there you go. Who, who would have thunk it? I just I work know. here. I think we can say. I think we can. I think we can stay, but we can pause the recording. Hold on. Let me see. Let me just have a look. Zero one five three. No, I think it's a different session. No. No? Is it a different session? Yeah, it's a, I think it's a different session. Yeah. The meeting ID for the Kahoot is, uh, ends in 068. This one ends in 153. Oh, okay. We didn't. Okay. There we go. You are the master. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> if we end this and we come back and then we're at the same link anyway, we're okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> It'll look like we're the same one. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I will uh, I will end this now, and then I will join the other one. <laughs> All right, we'll see you over there. Okay.